is. We'll find out in a second. It's going to be loud because it's windy when she opens the door. Look what I found, babe. What is it? It's a message in the bottle. <laughs> but it didn't get very far. It's from Douglas Island. I don't know. It says open it. Should we open it? Yeah, let's take it home. We'll open it. Okay. It says message enclosed. Let's do it. Let's go open it up. So this is the bottle that we found on the beach. We brought it home. We thought we'd open it up and share with you what's inside. Yes, we're really excited. It's our first message in the bottle. There's something inside. Too cute. Raven threw a frisbee up here. <laughs> oh, babe, this here, is... Here, hold it up and here, cover the address up. Cover the address up. Hold it up so everybody can see. Hi, Raven. Here you go. This is what, this is what came in. It's got, we got a cool little drawing down there. Yes, and it's a letter from... It says, Hello. This was on January 15th, 2020. My name is Ansel and I'm three and a half years old. I live on Douglas Island in Alaska. I like rockets, bulldozers, trucks, penguins, and sausages. <laughs> if you find this message, please write back. Well, Ansel, this is probably the sweetest thing that I have ever seen. We will definitely write Ansel back and let him know that it made it over to our island. And I think we're going to wrap this back up and put this message back in. And I think we should um, send it back off in the ocean and hopefully it will go on a new adventure and it will come to somebody else and they can also write Ansel a letter back. All right, so we got the bottle on the 28th of January, 22, and um, he sent it out on January 15th, 2022, and so it took two weeks for it to get out, Raven. <laughs> she, Raven. She, she wants to be a part of the family. <laughs> so it took two weeks for the bottle to get from Douglas Island to our island. So if you were curious, that's how long it took. So we'll get this back in the bottle and then when we head back to town, uh, we'll drop it back in the water and, and um, hopefully somebody else will find it and write Ansel a letter. All right, so since it's nasty outside, I thought we would come inside today and start a new segment called um, Off Grid 101. Just things that we've uh, used out here, things that we know that work and things that we know that, that don't work. And so for our first episode, I think we would talk about how to light your cabin. Uh, we didn't always have electricity out here. We, um, we probably went the first seven months to a year without uh, any electricity or a generator at all. And we used uh, Coleman lanterns, we used Aladdin lamps and regular oil lamps to light our way through the night when we first moved out here. So we're going to talk about a little bit about these and we'll do a, a night comparison uh, at the end of the video. But um, let's start off with some of the ways you can light your cabin and the way we're lighting it right now and that, that is with electricity. We'll go out and show you how we get our electricity in just a minute. But there was another uh, way to light your cabin that I don't have here with me, but my brother-in-law in Fairbanks does, and that is with a propane lamp. And basically you just run conduit from outside to your propane, that connects to your propane tank, into your cabin, and then uh, you just have to twist a little knob, propane starts coming out, you put a lighter up to it, it ignites, and you have light. So I've got a picture here that will show you what it looks like. Uh, they just look like little, kind of like oil lamps, but um, they use propane instead. And you can, he's got a nice chandelier there, he's got 
ones that just mount to the wall. They're really handy. So anyways, we'll talk about these, then we'll go outside and talk about um, uh, solar power, battery banks, generators, and how we get power to the cabin now. When we first moved out here, we didn't have any electricity at all. We didn't have a generator. Uh, so our main source of light was the Coleman Lantern. Uh, this Coleman Lantern, this is what you typically get at stores now. Uh, this one was gifted to us by my mother and father-in-law. And um, the, the, the really cool thing about this is it has a striker that's built into it. So uh, you don't need to put a, a match or a lighter up inside here or some burning paper. So I thought we'd go over some of the parts and I thought we'd go over some of the other ways you can light your cabin. Uh, so for the Coleman Lantern, it basically just has a, a, a fuel storage area down here. It's got a, an a area for you to add the fuel. It's got your adjustable knob here, so you can either give it more uh, fuel or less fuel. This is also how you turn it off. And then it's got a pump, and that is how you pressurize the tank down here. The pump has a little tiny hole in it, so when you want to pressurize the tank, you'll crack the, you'll turn it uh, counterclockwise pull the steel mount, and then you'll put your thumb over that hole and push down. And when you come back up, take your thumb off, thumb back over the hole, push down, and then you'll keep doing that until you build up resistance in the tank. And then once the tank has uh, uh, enough pressure in here, then you can go ahead and light it. All right, so then up here, these are your uh, mantles, these two little things, that's what lights up. When you get mantles from the store, they are um, just like a little little webbing ball like this. It's got a string around it that's got wire in it. Then you take your mantle and you tie it to your uh, lantern. And then it's going to look like this. So what you want to do is grab a lighter. You'll um, light the, the mantle on fire. It will suck up into these little tiny uh, ball looking things. And uh, it becomes less like this. and very brittle so once once you light it on fire you can't touch them anymore they are if you touch them they'll just disintegrate and be worthless so then you have a globe so we're going to put our globe back on here and we use these things uh probably for the first seven months to a year we lived out here uh, because we didn't have a generator, and so this was our only source of, of, of light. This was our original source of light. So, like I said, you'll take the pump, pump it up a little bit, so you get a good amount of resistance on here, and then you crack your valve, and there you go. You've got light. And then once you got the light, and then if you want, uh, eventually your tank will depressurize a little bit, so you'll have to come over and, and repressurize it. And that's also how you can make it a little brighter, so you just keep pumping it and, until she starts burning red hot. And there you go. So what the Coleman Lantern uses is this camp fuel or white gas. Uh, you can buy this pretty much everywhere, any camping store, Walmart, Fred Meyers, I don't know about Safeway, but uh, this, you can find these things anywhere. And then it has a little tiny funnel that you'll need to get, and it will also, um, it has a screen in here so it siphons out all the, the water and any, um, any dirt that may be in your, in your um, white gas. But like I said, we use these the majority of the time, and we have nails up in our um, second floor joist, and we hang these from the from the joist, and this is um, it gives you a, a good amount of overhead lighting. So the next one is the oil lamp. These are oil lamps. This is we also use these a lot before we got our generator. So it is much like a uh, Coleman stove. This has a little tank down here for your for your fuel or your oil, and then this is your chimney, and then it's got a wick that goes down into the oil, and that sucks up all the the oil into the wick. And all you need to do is give it a light. 
and she's on fire. And then you put your chimney on. If I can get my chimney on here. There we go. And then it's got a little adjuster here. You can raise or lower your wick. And if you want it to be brighter, you just raise it up a little bit. If you want it to be a little less dim, you uh, lower it down a little bit. Now, after hours of using this, this chimney will be really hot. So the best way to extinguish these things are just to put your mouth down there below. And that's all she wrote. These things do not illuminate a room as much as the Coleman Lantern does, but uh, we would use the Coleman lanterns downstairs and then when we would go up to bed we would take these upstairs because you didn't need a whole lot of light uh, for moving around. You just didn't want to be tripping over stuff in the middle of the night. So we'd use the, we would use these just to kind of uh, illuminate the bedroom up there. And, and, uh, but you can still, if you bring them downstairs and put them on the table, you can still play cards or board games or whatever. So you can see with these just fine. It's just uh, a little darker than the Coleman stoves. All right, and then the last lamp that we've used out here is these um, kerosene lamps. Now this is an Aladdin. Uh, you can buy these things used for 60, 70 bucks. Uh, I think a new one runs you 200, $300, but uh, these things run off of kerosene or you can buy Aladdin, um, Aladdin fuel for it. I don't have any kerosene right now, so we can't light this up, but these things work really well too. All right, so the easiest way to get electricity to your house is to wire your your um, circuit breakers to an outlet outside like this outlet right here and then you'll just place your generator over here and you'll need a like a pigtail and I'll show you what that is in just a second okay so hi baby so then what you do is you get an extension cord and you wire up two males to it and then one goes into the outlet that goes into your circuit breaker and the other one goes into your generator and that takes the power from your generator runs it straight up into your circuit breaker and then powers your entire cabin so then the other thing if you want to go big and that is with uh, solar panels so you can go as big as you want we've got six panels uh, right here behind me each one's 185 watts um, it's a small, it's on the smaller side of the system uh, that you could get, but uh, right now uh, it doesn't matter because because it's overcast and uh, we don't get a whole lot of sunlight anyways because we're in the winter, uh, we're having to run the generator still. But this would be your final project is you'd have a solar array out front that will collect uh, the energy of the sun and convert that into electricity. So from here, these panels are collecting DC energy. DC goes into the fuse box here, which goes all the way. So that goes all the way over to our little, our little um, charge station. And we'll take you over there and show you what it looks like inside. All right, here we are inside of our uh, charging station here, uh, the, the headquarters. And basically what happens is your solar array comes into your charge controller into your junction box and then your junction box sends the power from the DC panels over to your DC batteries. What we have here is 16 6 volt batteries and that gives us two 48 volt batteries. So you take those you take eight of those you take eight of those batteries that makes one 48 volt battery and then you take the other eight that makes a second 48 volt battery and that's what we use to run our house then from the battery here's where it can get tricky from the battery it goes up into an inverter the inverter takes that DC energy converts it to AC energy and sends it to the house and that's how you get AC in the house now you can also run DC lights in your house and I think um, Mike over at um, a cabin in 50 acres has DC lights and uh, I'll double check and we'll leave a link so you can go check out the video where he's doing his DC lights but um, that's how he's running lights in his places on DC power we're running AC power so we have to have the inverter that changes the DC to AC and then sends it just like regular power from your house in town is what we have here except for if our batteries go too low then we don't have any power left so because we're not getting anything from the Sun we are using our um, generator 
and we are charging our batteries right now and right now we're doing an absorb charge it does a bulk charge an absorb charge and then a float charging once you're float charging that means the system's topped off completely and then you can turn your generator off and you're ready to just run off your batteries so for us we've got a few generators and we'll do a video on generators but right now this little Honda 2200 is charging all of our batteries and we're being able to run lights and stuff inside at the same time. You could also have some lights on and run a drill or power tools or a vacuum cleaner. These little 2200s run a lot, they push out 2200 watts is basically what they push out. We also have a, a Yamaha 6800 and I got that just for backup in case everything, everything went bad. And if I want to run a welder, I uh, fire that humdinger up and that thing works. Now we're going to do a video on this, but this is a little Honda 1000. That's as low as you can go. Uh, you won't really be able to run a whole lot. It will power your lights and it will charge the system, but you can't have like lights and run a drill or anything like that because it will trip it and this thing will still be running, but you won't be getting any energy out of it which is not good you don't want to be wait you don't want to be wasting your gas like that so let's go back inside and we'll talk a little bit more get out of the wind all right so we're going to do the night test what we're going to do is we're going to use the two coleman lanterns and two oil lamps uh, we'll get these fired up first that way you can see what they look like and how bright it gets and then we'll do the oil lamps here and show you how those guys look so this is uh what it looks like I guess I need a headlamp. This is what it looks like with the light from the kitchen on. This is headlamp only. Here we go. Headlamp off. There we are. I guess I gotta put my headlamp on. So we uh, we always had nails uh, up here so we could hang these up. There you go, so you can't see me very well, but uh, you can see well enough to get around in here. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can play card games and everything. So we'll, uh, we'll extinguish the, the Coleman lanterns here and light up the, the oil lamps here. You can't hang those, so they're pretty much just a surface light. You don't get any real overhead light from them. So let's get these guys off. All right, there we go. There's your ore lamps. Uh, they are obviously not as bright as the Coleman's lamps and the Coleman lamps aren't as bright as the uh, LED lights that we have when we have the, uh, the batteries pumping juice into the cabin. There we go. So hopefully that uh, gave you guys some uh, insight on what the lights look like. Like we got, we went from electricity, LED lights like you find in your house uh, to Coleman lanterns, which are a little less bright than the electricity and then to oil lamps. And um, there you are. Hopefully that shed some light on some of this for you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.